Welcome back. This is Cosmic Insight Astrology. My name is Christina. All right, guys. If you have a Virgo rising, Virgo sun or Virgo moon, this is your uh, 2020 September astrology uh, forecast. Let's see what's going on for you in September. So the planetary retrogates already going to start and the inner planet actually, because Mercury going to station retrogate on uh, September 9th. And also September 4th, we will have Mars, the planet of war, um, the inner warrior, the planet of desire, which is also going to go to shadow already. It's only going to go back uh, to retrograde in uh, October 30th, but the shadow period going to start on September 4th. So I'm going to animate the chart for you. Here is your ascendant. So if you are Virgo, and then over here, the outer wheel going to uh, animate the chart for you for the entire month. And we're going to analyze that together. So look at September 1st, 2022. We're going to have Mars and we're going to have Jupiter retrograde sextile for you in your 10th house and 8th house. Jupiter is the planet of blessing. Jupiter was Sagittarius and Pisces. And it is actually the planet of prosperity, wisdom, generosity, abundance. And Mars, as I said before already, that's the planet of desire, the aggression, uh, warrior, and courage. And look at that here. Eight house is representing other people's money, order, taboo, sex, death, and uh, pregnancy, and also bank system. And look, the 10th house is your career. That's your reputation. So what does it uh, going to do for you? This sextile actually can bring a lover in for you. And the lover could be your co-workers or could come from somewhere from your career, actually. It could be an attorney also, or it could be a doctor. Uh, maybe you are the patient and, and uh, actually uh, it is your doctor. Also, it could be something like other people wants you to succeed. So with this situation, you will be capable to have a mortgage or, or you know, like as insurance payout. And because it is your career, you can actually create your career because other people is going to give you the foundation for it. Okay, let's go and move forward. But you know, that is like Mars and Jupiter in general, it is optimistic and really adventurous and uh, truly untiring. So it has a lot of energy and sometimes even has a little bit of arrogance. So you will need to be careful with the arrogance over here. But definitely you're willing to take uh, the opportunity, act on the opportunity, and you are willing to make a change here. Okay, let's go to September 2nd. September 2nd, we're going to have Mercury in Libra opposing Jupiter retrograde in six degrees. Here is Mercury in Libra already, and here is Jupiter for you, six degrees retrograde in your eighth house. So usually, you know, Mercury is symbolizing communication. It is actually symbolizing or... Uh, reasoning ability or mind and, and, you know, the way we are thinking. And also it can represent sales and vehicles as well. And Jupiter, we were talking about that. That's the planet of blessing. We also told, talked about eight house. So I'm not going to repeat myself. But the second house is also your finances. It is the money, what you earn. That is your value. That is your belongings. So in this matter, when these two planets are opposing each other in heaven, that could take the, actually, your judgment is a little bit off. So you can leap to conclusion, but what kind of area it will affect you? It's going to affect your financial situation. So for example, that is sales or contracts, and that is mortgage. For example, you might going to sign a contract or a mortgage or anything, but actually later on, you will regret regret and 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 um, yes so there is a regret in this or you know um, you might going to to actually have to pay 
uh, a big amount of money if you want to get out from this contract later on. So let's move forward. And we're going to go up till September uh, 7th, 3rd, 4th. 5th, 6th, 7th, because then we're going to have something. We're going to have a uh, sun in Virgo going to actually trine in uh, um, North Node in Taurus. So look at that. North Node is in Taurus and it's going to trine sun in Virgo. So that is 16 degrees and, uh, and um, 14 degrees, but sun later on that they're going to go and move forward a little bit. So what does it mean, the sun and north node? North node is your purpose, actually. And, you know, Taurus is a fixed earth sign. It is very hard uh, to change its mind. But north node is the, the future karma for you. North node, actually, it's, it's like very Jupiterian energy. It is a blessing. And the trine is always welcoming. That's the most beneficial planetary aspect. And uh, when it's trains with sun and sun in your first house, it's representing, you know, like, for example, I'm going to have a new purpose, I might going to study anthropology, because ninth house, it's representing it's going to be in your ninth house, it is foreign countries or anthropology, or, you know, like become a, a Mm, what is that? A diplomat, a foreign diplomat. So it could be your new purpose, or you know, it could be something with language as well, because ninth house representing language, and you know, you and 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 studying. So I might want to study in an, a foreign country, and I might want to study a foreign language as well. But uh, definitely, it's a new purpose. It's a um, new purpose that you're going to, to find for yourself. And uh, the next two days, when the sun is moving forward all the way to 17 degrees, and that's when actually we're going to have full moon in Pisces. So what does it mean for you? It's going to happen in your first and in your seventh house, Virgos, because Pisces is your opposite sign. So obviously, when full moon happens in uh, astrology, then the sun and the moon is in exact opposition in heaven. So the moon is going to affect this full moon, your relationships, your one-on-one -on -one relationship. And seventh house is not only marriage, it's long-term relationship. It is your partner. It is your business partner as well. And, you know, one-on-one -on -one friendship as well. And full moon, it's always a completion and an ending in our life. So something that doesn't serve us have to go. And in this case, something has to go in seventh house matter. It doesn't mean you're going to divorce or it doesn't mean you're going to lose a friend. But it means like, you know, something what was not working with your partner or not working with a friend, it will change. It will end. So definitely that. And, you know, let's talk about a little bit of Pisces. Pisces, the magical being. Pisces, the most spiritual sign in astrology. Pisces ruled by Neptune and ruled by, here is Neptune, here in Pisces. So Pisces ruled by uh, Neptune and Pisces ruled by Jupiter, co-ruled with Jupiter. And you know, Jupiter we were talking about, that's Adam, abundance, prosperity, and growth. And uh, what is Neptune? Neptune actually representing dreams and uh, psychic ability, intuition, but also lies and addiction as well. So uh, I wanted to talk about this Pisces full moon and what kind of ritual you can do for yourself, Virgo, during this uh, full moon period. So first of all, um, Pisces ruled by uh, the stone of amethyst, and also you can use lapis lazuli because of the Jupiter uh, energy, and it's both of them going to connect with the divine energy. It is actually opening up your um, chakra, your crown chakra, and connecting with the divine, connecting with God. And uh, in this full moon, for example, you can actually pray for 
let go of all the obstacles that is in your way and see clearly. Because, you know, Pisces is delusional. So not necessarily, Pisces can see everything uh, through pink glasses. And you might see everything through p- uh, pink glasses because of your partner or business partner. You don't see the true authentic self of your partner. So you can uh, just do a praying about that. Like, all right, I need to see clearly about my partner. You can actually use, you know, Pisces rules, lotus flower, it rules fig tree and pines. So definitely you can use pine oil if you would like to, or clean, put that in your water when you wash the floor. And, you know, that's very Piscean energy and you will feel connected and you will feel connected with the divine energy. And, you know, Magvert actually, because it's giving you lucidity and Pisces is about lucid dreaming. Um, so for example, Magvert or Lotus tea definitely could give you some kind of high end lucidity and you will get even deeper connected with the divine energy if you would like to open that kind of crown chakra and your third eye, because also it's very important. Uh, Pisces can easily see. And, you know, those are usually psychic and clairvoyance. So that's what you should do during this full moon. But look at what this full moon going to bring for you. So this full moon actually going to sextile with um, Uranus and North Node. So here is the moon and it's going to sextile with Uranus and North Node. Just like the sun, it's still... Um, trining actually with Uranus and North Node. So uh, in, even the sun and the moon both going to get a lot of positive energy f- during this full moon, right? So what can it happen? So ninth house matters, anything with traveling. Actually, an unexpected traveling could come up for you and you can visit who? Moon rules sister, moon rules mother, or, you know, like really good friend who, uh, who is a female because it's female. And, and, you know, it could represent that. So definitely, or, you know, like... Um, like Uranus is definitely unexpected and Uranus could be something with, um, well, something with artificial intelligence. So, or, you know, like something with unique Uranus could also be like, uh, my partner is going to take me to a a balloon uh, fly. Um, So the air balloon fly or something like that. Definitely romantic. It could be really romantic here. But, you know, just like go to a foreign country, a long term trip, and it could be a surprise for you. Okay, so let's move forward uh, from this uh, full moon over here. Do your magic. And actually, Pisces is definitely truly magical. Uh, But let's go and move forward, actually, um, to the 11th, uh, no, actually for the 16th, when Venus going to square Mars for you. So moving to 16th, then Venus is going to square Mars for you. So here is Venus and here is Mars. So 13 and 14 degrees. 10th house and 1st house matter. So you would like to be spoiled. You would like to take care of yourself, do something about your clothing or, you know, like actually Venus and Mars, that is the the lovers in in heaven. And uh, and, uh, Mars is your inner warrior and your desire. And Venus actually is uh, representing uh, love and possession and, and, you know, art and beauty and attraction in our life. So you will feel attracted and uh, you will feel like nothing can stop you. And, you know, 10th house is your reputation. You might going to be on stage and you need to do a new hairdo or, you know, you need to find some beautiful clothing for yourself. You might going to hire a tailor because Virgo is really dogmatic, can work really um, uh, uh, detailed and perfectionist. So yes, it could be like, I need a tailor or someone who can create a, a designer who can create a beautiful image for myself because I need uh, to, to, to be in a place where, where my reputation is really important. So I'm going to 
you know, be on stage, it could represent that. Or, you know, I'm going to get a bonus or an award, and that's why I need to do something. And this award could bring me money. So Venus and Mars here could actually be very romantic also, and, you know, very sexual and sensual. And, uh, and it could be like, all right, I, I'm going to have someone from my career, you know, like a, a love affair. It could bring a love affair for you. All right, so let's talk about also on September 5th, Venus went to Virgo before um, she was in Leo. And then Pallas Athene uh, went to Cancer on September 6th. So Pallas Athene is here for you. Um, and then I'm going to move forward from the 16th and uh, I go, no, actually I'm going to talk about Neptune on the 16th. And um, on the 16th, we're going to have a Sun and Neptune opposition because, you know, Neptune, it's in Pisces and the Sun is going to be still in Virgo, 23 degrees. So what can it bring uh, Neptune and Sun opposition? So that is some really unrealistic uh, word here because Neptune is, is very delusional and uh, very uh, illusional. So also, you know, like very utopic and, uh, and blindfolded. So, so it could be a problem because it could be like, I don't see something. Somebody is lying to me. A business partner could lie to me. My partner could lie to be, me about something. My partner actually could hide something because Neptune also in 12th house, Rose 12th house, so it's behind the scene, it's hiding. So it's secretive. So it could be like maybe my partner is drinking or using drugs and hiding that from me. So yes, that's not necessarily a welcoming aspect over here, but it's simple could be because you are going to run away and you're going to escape in, in escapism. It could be escapism and you're going to escape in art. So you're gonna write or create music and you don't want to be uh, seen uh, by anyone. So, and then uh, let's see what is going to happen on the 16th. We're going to have nothing else, but we're going to go to the 18th, two days more over here. And the 18th, we're going to have Mercury and Jupiter opposition. So let's see what's going to happen over here with Mercury and Jupiter opposition. So Jupiter is in Aries. And it's already in four degrees, retrograde back for to four degrees. And Mercury is five degrees, Libra. And those are opposing. Mercury is communication. Mercury is um, uh, CS. Mercury is uh, the way you process uh, knowledge. And, you know, Jupiter is the planet of blessing. It's still in eight and uh, uh, four. And uh, yes, because Mercury went back to retrograde, it's already opposed to each other on September 2nd. So we don't have to talk about that again. Um, but because of Mercury is in retrograde, so it's got um, exact and opposing again. So it's twice going to represent something like uh, some kind of issue with your judgment about your financial situation. So be careful. Uh, then... We also going to have Sun and Pluto trine, and here is Sun, and where is Pluto? Here is Pluto. Okay, so that is Earth sign, and it's going to trine. Trine is a positive aspect, fifth house and first house. So what can it be? Uh, you know, Sun and Pluto, it could be really powerful and it could be like, for example, you can have a really powerful sexual charisma and, and you will be flirty and you will be sensual and, and that's kind of sexual charisma going to be around you and everybody going to hit on you and, and you know, uh, definitely earning your power back and getting your power back and you will feel that. And, you know, Pluto in your fifth house transiting, actually, Virgos, it could be something financial. 
So Sun and Pluto, it is like, you know, I know my worth right now and I'm capable to create money because I know my worth. It could be also very transformational with your children as well. So it could be like, you know, I going to transform the way I relate to my children. I going to listen more. I going to be there for them more. It could represent that one as well. And let's move forward. So on... Uh, September 20th, we're going to go when Venus is going to trine Uranus. So let's see, that's 19 and 20th. And yes, so Venus, the planet of love, is going to trine Uranus here, Virgo and, um, and uh, Taurus. Okay, so mutable and fixed sign. One is changing, the other one doesn't want change. But, you know, it's a positive aspect. It's training. It's in your first and ninth house. Ninth house is definitely higher education. It could be like you going to go back to school or somebody going to pay for you to go back to school. But Uranus is the unexpected, eclectic, and Venus is a boat. And in the first house is about the way you look. So it could be like, you know what, uh, I going to to have an eclectic design right now, something that's going to raise some eyebrow. That could be that as well. And it could be also you going to invest in foreign uh, uh, digital currency because Uranus could be digital currency, or you just going to, to get something which is unexpectedly, it could be a bling bling, you know, because Venus rules second house, which is your... Um, which is your um, belongings and, and jewelry. So unexpectedly, you can get a, a, a jewelry from someone from who is in a foreign country or someone who, uh, some, it could be something religious also. So you can get something really unique or find something very unique. For example, okay, that could be an example. Venus rules money and coins and, you know, belongings, and you find something actually even in a church, because ninth house representing, or in a foreign land when you are traveling, but it could be very unique and very unexpected things. So, for example, you know, somebody, and it could cost a, a lot of money, somebody going to the beach and find a diamond ring, or, you know, find some kind of uh, uh, authentic uh, I don't know which century coin and it's worth a million dollars. So it could be that one is that. It would be fun though, right? There goes. But, but that's definitely uh, positive here. And you know, Uranus unexpected, Venus is money. It could be like uh, uh, ninth house could be also because ruled by Jupiter. And you know, Jupiter like to risk. Um, and Jupiter right now actually in areas. Um, and definitely risk taking. So I would say, like even some kind of horse. Um, uh, what is that um, horse um, bid bid on some kind of horse race? Because ninth house ruled by uh, Sagittarius and its horse race, so you can win something on horse race as well. Okay, let's move forward, guys. So we're going to go on the twenty second. Then. Uh, actually, Virgo going to get into uh, Libra. And then um, on the 23rd, um, the, the Libra sun, Virgo get into Libra. Oh my God, sun going to get into Libra. What am I talking about? And that Libra sun actually on the 23rd going to conjunct with Mercury here because that's also in Libra right now. So, okay, so what is this? It is some kind of, Libra is, is uh, love because ruled by Venus. And Mercury is communication. So it could be something like kind of cheerful, humor, humorous uh, love talk between people. But, but actually in your second house, second house is your belonging, second house is your financial. It could be like you are mediating about some kind of uh, job-related um, 
financial issues. So for example, salary issues. You are going to work or you get a new job or you just get hired and you are negotiating your salary right now. And, uh, you know, uh, Libra ruled by Venus and Venus is in Virgo right now. So, so um, in your first house, so everything about the way you look and you can find something that we were talking about. So definitely this negotiation could turn beneficial for you. Let's move forward, Virgos. Let's go to actually the 24th. So we're going to go one day further. And then we're going to have uh, Venus opposing Neptune. So Neptune is delusional, illusional. Venus is here. But, you know, Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, higher octave of love, unconditional love. Venus can have the material side. So it could be the, the real yin and yang, but... But when it's opposing to each other, it is like, okay, so should I go for material or for my head, right? So should I be ruled by my head and material things? Or should I go for higher octave of love and, and be more spiritual and ruled by heart? So it could be a conversation be, be, uh, between the, what your heart wants and what your mind wants over here. And... Uh, it could be also something like uh, you are actually blinded because Neptune is blind by someone's beauty or you going to blind someone with your beauty. So, you know, I told you, you're going to get some kind of new style, new hairstyle or whatever. And actually your partner going to be totally blinded with your beauty and it's going to be like, oh, I really, really love it. Or actually because it's a position, he or she might say, I love it, but it's going to be a lie because of not necessarily like it, but just pretend. Uh, Neptune can pretend as well. All right, so let's move forward. And actually, uh, it's September 25th, we're going to go. And September 25th, we're going to have a new moon uh, in Libra, two degrees, 49 minutes. And... Uh, Let's see, where is the new moon in Libra? So I have to actually go a little bit further, maybe the 26th. Um, so mm, yeah, I'm going to go to the 26th, but it's going to happen actually uh, two degrees uh, in uh, Libra, two degrees, 49 minutes, and it's going to be in your second house. Again, financial. So the work what you are started and the negotiating what you are started going to be beneficial because you are start something new, a new kind of income is coming into your life, a new kind of earning is coming into your life. And, you know, two degrees and 49 minutes, that is Virgo Dad and also Virgo Deacon. Oh, Libra. Yes, Libra. Libra Dwad and Libra Deacon, because the new moon, we have that in, in, in uh, Libra. Uh, so, so what does it mean really here? It's ruled by Venus. And, you know, Venus is money itself, rules second house Taurus, so it rules the money house, right? And this uh, uh, new moon in Libra going to be ruled by Venus. So, so definitely it's everything about negotiating your, your salary. And definitely it's a new beginning, a new start, a fresh start you're going to get over here. It's almost like you're going to take off your mind of some kind of trouble and worrying about money because you're going to have a new kind of income and you're going to be very happy about that. And all right, then let's go to September 26. And September 26, uh, we're going to have Sun and Jupiter opposition. So September 26, uh, Sun and Jupiter opposition in three degrees. It's the eighth and second house, something again uh, with the money that you invested or the money in the bank. So you might going to actually start to think of like, 
should I keep the money in the bank or should I invest my money in something because of the inflation? So that kind of situation can occur for you. So some kind of negotiating with yourself about money in the bank and, and the money that you earn and how, how to actually um, um, preserve your money. So not necessarily you want to preserve that in the bank. So you might going to choose something else to preserve your money in. And it could be some kind of librarian energy or areas energy. Areas rules matters, right? And, and Libra over here, it could be some kind of bling bling. So I going to buy something with, uh, what is that? I gonna buy uh, some jewelry or I going to buy some kind of matter, invest in matter, and that's going to be great for me. Okay, so what else should we talk about? Uh, we should talk about also the 28th and we're going to go to 20, no, actually the 27th, we're going to have Mercury and Pluto training. So what does Mercury and Pluto uh, does like actually it is like uh, let's talk about taboos and and you can dig into researches really deeply so here is mercury and then here is pluto so this train is going to give you like okay i want to do some kind of research but about what how to invest money because fifth house is is investment and children and creativity happiness and joy or how to be more joyful how to transfer myself so I will be truly happy because I want to be happy and I want it to come that from inside uh, that kind of situation but also research about uh, children and fertility issues or it could be research about uh, or you know what actually it could be like looking after your children because they might be teenagers and you know what are they doing or or you know just uh, just sneaking um or snooping around in their rooms or whatever, because you're not necessarily trusting them. Okay, and uh, Mars and Saturn try. So here is Saturn and here is Mars. And that is on the 28th when these two planets going to try. And you know, Saturn. Saturn is really the limitation, restriction, caution, organization, discipline. Also it's good work ethic, work stamina, endurance as a, reliability so definitely it's a mature planet and with mars the planet of warrior you know the mars is the soldier and uh, saturn is actually the 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 chief saturn is the general so but those kind of two working together with this train for you in the sixth and tenth house it's representing with a really really good work ethic i will be recognized and i will make it like you know like like uh, Mars in 10th house, it is like, I want reputation over here. I'm working for it. And everybody gonna see my, my good work ethic if you started a new job. Or, you know, if you are on stage, you're going to be like, yes, I have that kind of look like, like they can actually um, be a little bit uh, intimidated by me and intimidated my pitch because it's going to be powerful it's restless and powerful in gemini so my speech and it could be some kind of non-profit so i'm going to to talk about on stage for some kind of charity or non-profit or whatever reason it is but definitely for you virgos it is six holes of work or you know it could be something with uh, with your Tenth house could be a doctor. Um, this is it could be a surgery, and you know Saturn could be joined. So you or teeth. So you might just going to find a dentist or a doctor who later on could do a surgery for you, and you're going to find the perfect one right now. And uh, what else I wanted to say? So Mercury, we were talking about that Mercury event in retrograde, station retrograde on September 9th in eight degrees, 55 minutes in your first house. And first house is um, your self-esteem. First house is everything. That is the, that, that is the self, actually. And, um, and that is, um, well, you know, your appearance and, and, 
your surface pers personality. And uh, Mercury over there, it could be, and going back to retrograde, so it could be something like, like my speech is not uh, coherent somehow, or, or, you know, I'm returning to something with myself and, and the way I represent myself through communication. So, for example, I used some words before, but I, after that I didn't. Uh, and then right now I'm returning to it, like, because I know it would suit me very well in the new job. So the way of communication uh, uh, could suit me very well in that kind of new job. All right, so it's going to go retrograde over here. So yes, that's what I wanted to talk about. And also, uh, probably, uh, I'm go also going to mention that like Ceres uh, on September 29, actually going to go uh, to Virgo. So it's also going to be over here in your first house. So Ceres coming from Leo to your first house. Ceres is the goddess of agriculture, but also it's representing some kind of loss or fears as well, it's rules, rules, you know, poppy seed and, and hop, so associated with, uh, with beer and, and opiate. Uh, but in your first house, it could be like, um, I'm losing myself. So for example, as I said, you know, you're going to return to a way of communication over here because of that's what the verb, the new verb desires. And then you are feeling like, oh my, I'm losing my, my own authentic self because I have to pretend with this Ceres over here. All right, Virgos, I hope you liked my uh, podcast. And if you did so, then please uh, subscribe to my channel. You can check me on social media, Urban Witch Org on Instagram or Urban Witch um, org uh, Christina Simon on Facebook and I have an other page Urban Witch on my Facebook page and follow me over here because I always going to come up with some uh, new podcast and videos that might interest you and you might learn uh, or you might going to just get some clarity. I wish you a you know like a, a joyful journey in, in September and also I I um, wish you to stay safe. All right. Thank you so much for your listening. Take care of yourself. Till we meet again in October. Bye.